The largest river in Russia, and also Europe, is the Volga. It collects its waters and starts in the Valdai Hills, making its way down to the Caspian Sea. About halfway down its course, it makes an odd loop-like shape, as though it was unsure about what direction to take. This is known as the Samara Loop. There also lies the city of Samara, a scientific and a cultural hub. It is Russia's eighth largest city, with a population of 1.17 million residents. It is situated 587 kilometers southeast of Moscow, and the country of Kazakhstan is only another 160 kilometers south. Easily the biggest claim to fame of this city is that it produced the rockets that sent the first humans into space. On the 12th of April 1961, the first ever cosmonaut, Yuri Gagarin, was sent sent to space on the Vostok by the OR-7 rocket that had been manufactured in Samara. Meaning that Samara played a crucial part in the process that turned Russia into a spacefaring nation and ultimately advanced humanity significantly. So when and how was this city created? Why did it become the main source of rocket ships in the Soviet Union? And what achievements exactly did the USSR accomplish as a result? One of the earliest known records of Samara is dated back to 1367 on this Venetian map, confirming the existence of a settlement there for well over 654 years, and in all likelihood, the region was inhabited since the Middle Ages, serving as an important outpost connecting Central Asia with Russia. Officially today's city of Samara started with a fortress built on the confluence of the Volga and Samara River. The order to build it came from Tsar Fyodor Ivanovich in 1586. This fortress was meant to be a frontier protecting the easternmost boundaries of Russia from various nomads and Mongols. But it wouldn't be doing this for very long, as the Russian Empire soon began expanding at a dramatic pace by securing Kazan and Astrakhan, and further expanding eastwards to take up all of Siberia, until eventually it began to bump up against the Chinese resistance in 1652, where they were driven out of the Amur River Basin. With Volga secured in the hands of the Russians, it became an important artery connecting Russia with Central Asia. Still in the early years, Samara was a very small settlement, with just some 300 inhabitants, and it grew very slowly. It would only establish a government and would gain city status in the 1850s, while the population reached 63,000 in 1881. The rise of the city sped up considerably with the coming of industrialization. The Zhiguli Brewery was founded in 1881 and went on to produce the most iconic Russian beer, Zhigulyovskaya. In 1894, Cathedral of Christ the Savior was finished, the construction of which begun in 1869. It was the vocal point of the city and one of the tallest churches in Russia at the time. Unfortunately, it was demolished over the 1930s due to Soviet Union's atheistic policies. In 1913, the population of the city reached 144,000 residents. During the Russian Civil War that started in 1917, one of the critical fighting forces involved was the Czech Slovak Legion, about 100,000 soldiers made up of Czechs and Slovaks. In 1918, the Czechs the Slovak Legion was in open warfare with the Bolsheviks and had seized multiple cities along the Trans-Siberian Railroad. Their main priority, however, had been to continue to secure passage to Vladivostok to ultimately join the fight on the Western Front. Anti-Bolshevik elements in Russia, on the other hand, hoped they would put their considerable strength towards actively fighting the Bolsheviks. So on June 8, at the urging of local members of the Socialist Revolutionary Party, the Czechs overthrew the Bolshevik authorities in Samara and the Revolutionary War officially began in the city. A counter-offensive started by the Red Army saw many cities recaptured and Samara was under the control of the Reds by the 8th of October 1918. And the war ultimately ended in 1920 with the defeat of the White Army. In 1935, Samara was renamed to Kuibushev in honor of Bolshevik leader Valerian Kuibushev, who was a Russian revolutionary, Red Army officer, and a prominent Soviet politician. In 1941, Kuibushev Square hosted a military parade in honor of the 24th anniversary of the Bolshevik Revolution, because the city was considered a wartime capital for the Bolsheviks. The square itself is the biggest in Russia, at 174,000 square meters. Then the city saw the construction of the famous Stalin Bunker, an air raid shelter. It was the alternative Supreme High Command headquarters of the Soviet Armed Forces, intended for just of Stalin's use. Constructed between February and October 1942, Stalin's bunker was designed to survive an explosion equivalent to two tons of TNT. Defensive measures include 23 meters of earth cover, 4 meters of concrete, and a layer of sand for protection against enemy air raids. However, Moscow was never taken, so Stalin apparently never even used or stepped in the shelter. As the means of production were moved away from Western Russia over to Volga and towards the east, Kuibusha played a major role in arming the country. During World War II, Kuibusha was chosen to be the alternative capital of the Soviet Union, should Moscow fall to the invading Germans. In October 1941, the Communist Party and government organizations leading cultural establishments and their staff were evacuated to the city. From the very first months of the war, the city supplied the front with aircraft, which was the main specialty of the city, as well as firearms and ammunition. Polish and Czech 
Czechoslovakian military units were formed on the territory of the Volga military district, and Samara citizens also fought at the front, many of them as volunteers. The war never reached the city thanks to the high production capacity and the industriousness of the Soviet regime that had fully mobilized for the war effort. Tensions began rising between the Soviet Union and the United States. The primary source of conflict arose from the struggle between two political beliefs of communism and capitalism. The conflict became known as the Cold War. Similar to Yekaterinburg, defense industry developed rapidly in Kuibusha thanks due to the Cold War and the competitiveness that it came with, leading to Kuibusha becoming a closed city, protecting secret Soviet weapons program from falling into the hands of Western powers such as the US. Boats passing along the River Volga were only allowed through at night, so that the city could not be spotted by the passing ships. Thanks to the aeronautics industry brought to the city during the years of the World War II, Kuibushev Enterprises played a leading role in the development of Soviet domestic aviation and the implementation of the Soviet space program, mainly through the development and production of the OR-7 rocket, which was originally intended to serve as an intercontinental ballistic missile. When Soviet nuclear warheads became lighter, the OR-7 turned out to be impractical as a ballistic missile, and there were no other heavy payloads with military application. However, long-term development made the rockets useful in the Soviet and Russian space programs. Their purpose shifted from nuclear warheads to satellites, probes, manned and unmanned spacecraft, and other non-threatening payloads. Almost every family living in the city was in some way connected to the production of these rockets. The rocket production in Kuibushev directly contributed to the Soviet Union's success in the space race, leading to further major breakthroughs and advances for humanity as a whole. Here is a quick breakdown of the Soviet Union's major achievements during the space race. 4th of October 1957, the USSR successfully launches Sputnik 1, the first Earth orbiting satellite in history. 3rd of November 1957, Sputnik 2 carried a dog named Laika into space. USSR becomes the first nation to successfully send a living organism into orbit. 2nd of January 1959, Luna 1, known as the first cosmic rocket, becomes the first human man made object to leave the orbit of the Earth and orbit the Sun. 12th of September 1959, Luna 2 accomplishes its mission, creating the first spacecraft to reach the surface of the Moon. 4th of October 1959, Luna 3 succeeds in the mission of sending an object into orbit around the Moon, photograph its far side. 19th of August 1960, aboard the Soviet Union Sputnik 5, Belka and Strelka, and a range of plants are returned alive from space. 12th of April 1961, the Soviet Union achieve a clear triumph, as aboard the Vostok 1, Yuri Gagarin makes a single orbit around the Earth and becomes the first man to reach space. He remained in space for 1 hour and 48 minutes before landing in Saratov Oblast and then recovering in Kuibushev. 16th of June 1963, Valentina Tereshkova becomes the first civilian and first woman in space. She spends almost three days in space, orbiting the Earth 48 times aboard Vostok 6. 18th of March 1965, Alexei Leonov leaves his spacecraft, the Voskhod 2, in a specialized spacesuit and conducts a 12 minute spacewalk, first of its kind. 19th of April 1971, the USSR launches the first space station. Parts of this spacecraft will become the core segments of the International Space Station. 15th of July 1975, with the tensions between the US and USSR softening, the first cooperative Apollo Soyuz mission is launched. With two separate flights, the Apollo and Soyuz spacecraft dock in space, and the commanders Tom Stafford and Alexei Leonov exchange the first international handshake. This act can be seen to symbolically end the space race. This is the Soyuz rocket monument in Samara. It is dedicated to the legacy of the rockets that were produced here and the achievements that followed. Opening ceremony took place on October 1, 2001 and was held in conjunction with a celebration of the 50th anniversary of the first manned spaceflight performed by Yuri Gagarin. The times of Russia as a great spacefaring nation would soon come to a temporary close in 1991 with the fall of the Soviet Union. Samara also got its historic name back. What followed, of course, is a well-known story to the subscribers of this channel and anyone living in Russia during these times. The Russian economy totally collapsed and the value of the ruble plummeted. Moving over to the free market economy was not easy and nowhere in Russia was spared the hardship. Businesses that had always relied on support of the government were suddenly abandoned and they had to scramble to become profitable to catch up with their international counterparts. This meant massive layoffs and bankruptcies and the businesses that survived only did so making major production changes. It appears that Samara as a city never fully recovered from the mass exodus that it experienced during those times. By viewing macrotrans.net, we can see that Samara's population gradually declined after after 1989 and has never actually recovered or come back to its peak of 1987. 
However, the space industry is very much ongoing in Samara today. In April 2020, Dmitry Baranov, general director of Samara Space Center, said the company has 52 Soyuz rockets already built, 40 in storage, and 12 at spaceports awaiting missions. Russia currently uses Soyuz 2 rockets to launch crews and cargo to the International Space Station and to put up government satellites. European launch provider Arian Space also uses Russian-built Soyuz 2 for satellite launches. So Samara has not and will not stop propelling humans into space anytime soon. Now guess the location of this footage for the algorithm and I will see you soon. Take care. Geoperspective out.